my pleasure to welcome you uh, to be with us today, both guests and visitors and members alike. Um, we have a special day today planned, and I know uh, um, I came running over here with my track shoes this morning because I ran late with Bible study, which is getting to be normal for you all here at this later service. So my apologies to you and to those of you who uh, were a part of Bible study who are making your way over. Um, we can excuse that, though, because I'll just make a few announcements while everybody's getting situated this morning. Not the least of which is today is a special day. Um, it's Good Shepherd Sunday. So you're going to note that the readings today center around Jesus, the Good Shepherd, today. So I want you to pay attention uh, and listen for that. We'll be dealing with it uh, as I preach on uh, today's gospel lesson, where Jesus indeed calls himself the Good Shepherd. Um, we have a special treat today that the choir is singing for us this morning, and uh, they sang at the early service. So they will be singing um, immediately following confession and absolution this morning. Um, so pay attention for that as well. Uh, the other quick note before we get started with services today is just a reminder that we'll be using Divine Service Setting 5, which is a hymnic setting that has some, some uh, options that we've employed for our service today. So it's not, it's not one that everybody is always used to because it has more singing. So for instance, the creed is a sung creed as opposed to a spoken creed. Um, so uh, just note that there will be some things um, that will be a little bit different with that. Uh, I will also remind you that um, you're certainly welcome to use the hymnals in your pew. Uh, if you'd like to see the music along as we do the singing, that's a part of our service, so you know what's going on with that. I think those are all of my uh, announcements that I need before services. So um, in acknowledgement that Jesus is indeed the Good Shepherd, we open with our opening hymn number 740, I Am Jesus, Little Lamb. I invite you to please rise as you are able for our services today. We make our beginning this morning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart, and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, 
to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated as our choir performs. Please rise as we continue with the words of the intro today spoken responsively. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me, and I lay down my life for the sheep. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I am the Good Shepherd. 
I know my own, and my own know me, and I lay down my life for the sheep. We continue with the glory in excelsis as sung in hymn number 947. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, merciful Father, since you have wakened from death the shepherd of your sheep, grant us your Holy Spirit, that when we hear the voice of our shepherd, we may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for our readings. Our first reading is from the book of Acts, chapter 4, verses 1 through 12. As they were speaking to the people, the priests and the captain of the temple and the Sadducees came upon them, greatly annoyed because they were teaching the people and proclaiming in Jesus the resurrection from the dead. And they arrested them and put them in custody until the next day, for it was already evening. But many of those who had heard the word believed, and the number of the men came to about 5,000. On the next day, their rulers and elders and scribes gathered together in Jerusalem with Annas the high priest and Caiaphas and John and Alexander and all who were of the high priestly family. And when they had set them in the midst, they inquired, By what power or by what name did you do this? 
Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders, if we are being examined today concerning a good deed done to a crippled man, by what means this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him this man is standing before you well. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle today is from 1 John 3, verse 16 through 24. By this we know love, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brothers. But if anyone has the world's goods and sees his brother in need, yet closes his heart against him, how does God's love abide in him? Little children, let us not love in word or talk, but in deed and in truth. By this we shall know that we are of the truth and reassure our heart before him. For whenever our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart and he knows everything. Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence before God. And whatever we ask, we receive from him. Because... We keep his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another just as he has commanded us. Whoever keeps his commandments abides in him, and he in them. And by this we know that he abides in us, by the Spirit whom he has given us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We now sing our hymn of the day, number 709.
Please rise for the reading of the Gospel. Hear now the Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He who is a hired hand and not a shepherd, who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees, and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life, that I may take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down, and I have authority to take it up again. This charge I have received from my Father. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We now have opportunity to confess our faith in the triune God by using the hymn number 953, We All Believe in One True God. We sing our creed today. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you all from God our Father and our risen Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Amen. And you are seated. <laughs> Today's text uh, for this message comes from the gospel lesson you heard read just a moment ago from John, the 10th chapter. You know, uh, the older that I get, the more my happy place has gotten to be my bed. I come home from a hard day's work and I'm tired and all I want to do is crawl into my bed and under the safety and warmth and security of my blanket sandwiched between my flannel sheets, maybe not sandwiched, maybe more like burritoed up in there, with the cool movement of the air from the ceiling fan and the open window circulating in the room around me, I'm in my place in my little bed burrito. Safe from all the things that are out there that plague me with only one goal when I make it there, rest. Yesterday we, uh, we rented, side note here, we rented a, uh, a wood chipper to chip up a bunch of the scrub trees that had all been felled on our property and we'll do some more of it today, but worked for a couple of hours yesterday, and my whole body hurts, my back, my elbows, my knees, my feet, and all I could think about last night after getting a shower was, when can I get into bed? See, that makes me different from my wife. Uh Uh-oh, here we go. She's perfectly content to crash on the couch until 2 a.m. 
I want to be in my bed. I have no trouble getting off the couch and making it into the bathroom to brush and floss and get into my pajamas and crawl into my burrito bed because I want nothing to do with having to get up in the middle of the night and having to do those things, groggily find my way to the sink and use the restroom, take off the clothes I've been in all day, crawl into bed, and then wonder, why can't I fall asleep now that I'm here at 2 in the morning? No, I want to lay down. I want to be there. I want to be there at the right time because that's when I want my rest the most and that's where I should be. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. These words rank amongst the most famous words of the Holy Scriptures. They were penned by a man who spent his boyhood as a shepherd. And I suppose in his mind there was a much clearer vision when he penned that psalm than I'll ever understand. He knew what it was like to shepherd wayward sheep. He knew what it meant to protect and to serve them, to care for their needs, to find a place for them where there was ample food and safekeeping, a place where they could truly rest. And maybe the future King David had a specific place in his mind, a specific place of peace and solitude when he wrote this psalm, or maybe it was just a place of his own imagining, a place where he had hoped to lead his sheepfold to. But in any case, we can understand that he would desire a place like this for those sheep that he was leading. It would be for them a place of rest, their own little burrito like mine, I suppose, a place where they could be led, where they could lay down in peace and security, where their fear could disappear, and it would be the best place for them to rest. Yes, you know David wrote of it, and he sought this place for the sheep that he was given to protect. I seek it. In my own way, as I shared with you, I want a place where I can rest. And for me, it's my bed. You, you want a place where you can rest. And you may seek it in your own way, in your own place as well. But our Lord Jesus speaks of it differently than any of these examples. He talks differently in John 10. He says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Note that Jesus doesn't give us this beautiful imagery that David gives that conjures babbling brooks and green grass, no cool, fluffy spot to lay down on with shade trees blocking the scorching sunlight. Nope. Jesus doesn't even give us a nice cozy bed where we can wrap up in our own sheets or fluffy blankets to lie down in, like in our little flannel burritos. Nope. Jesus tells us that he is going to be the one lying down. He is. But it'll be no simple sleepover for our Lord Christ when he lays down. That's not what he's referring to, because when Jesus speaks of being the good shepherd... And then he speaks of how, as the good shepherd, he plans to lay down his life for the sheep. He isn't talking about rest for himself. Instead, we know that Jesus speaks of his death. Laying down his life means sacrificially and unselfishly serving those sheep he's been given to protect. Serving you. By becoming a sacrifice for you. You know, I've thought about this Good Shepherd Sunday. I've been through a few in my day. I've had pastors preach to me about this stuff, and I'm not going to claim to know anything about what it takes to be a good shepherd. I don't know about being a sheep tender. I'm not going to try and build on an analogy that I'm really sort of scant in the details about on my own because I've never shown sheep at 4-H I've never sheared or shorn a sheep, and I've certainly never shepherded sheep, real ones, in my life. All I know is what people have told me about the job. Oh, sheep are stupid. 
Sheep recognize the voice of their shepherd. So long as he spends enough time around them and acclimates them to the sound of his voice, sheep do this and sheep do that, yada, yada, yada. All they're doing is telling me about sheep, and I have to have it described to me. I know nothing about real sheep. I can understand the analogy, and it's meaningful when people describe it to me, and I can be taught this, but for me personally, it's not really as meaningful as it could be. Instead, I had to think on my own of an example, and I realized at the outset of sharing with you the example I'm about to share with you that just like the sheep example and shepherd example that Scripture gives us, my example to you is still just another example. My encouragement to you is after I share my example that you think on what it means to be a shepherd and sheep. But this is the one that I thought of that I want to share with you. How about instead of me giving you this analogy that I don't understand, I give you one that I know. I want you to meet Leonard Isidore. Leonard's the one on the right on the screen. That's Dick Beathy on the left. Dick is the president of the Haiti Lutheran Mission Society. Leonard Isidore has a brother, Israel Isidore, who works in Haiti and serves at Delmas 89 at the church. They served at the time this picture was taken under Pastor Doris Jean Louis. But I want to talk about Leo for a moment. The first time I ever met Leo, I was a senior in high school back in 1987. Leo was our tap-tap driver. Tap-tap is what they call a Haitian taxi cab. And he used it to shuttle us youth kids around Port-au-Prince, Haiti. You see a picture of a tap-tap right there. You know how we got to these places where his brother would preach and Pastor Doris Jean Louis would preach at these stations around on the countryside in these little schools? Leo. Leo would bring us there. That's not his tap-tap. That's just a stock image I found of one because you'll see his in a moment. He had an old Toyota or a Datsun truck. I don't remember which. It had this wooden box like what you see on that one with a top over it on the whole back side of the vehicle. It had some bench seats built in over the wheel wells. And we would shove a bunch of youth kids into the back of that tap-tap. High schoolers, We'd fill the truck so full that the gate that you see hanging off on the back that was the step would be scraping on the ground when we'd drive over the bedrock roads. And just like he would shuttle his pastor, Doris Jean Louis, and his brother Israel around to the preaching stations all over in Haiti, he spent time shuttling us around as we were there on our mission trip, which was just every bit as much a tourist trip as much as it was us teaching VBS to the kids at church or pouring concrete at one of the schools on the floors in the classrooms so they didn't have to sit on dirt floors, or painting the classrooms and the sanctuary at the church and all the many and various other places that he took us, like to change U.S. dollars into Haitian gourds in the back alley with some seedy characters so they could triple the money that we brought down to them to be used for their mission work. What you need to know is that the average annual per capita income in Port-au-Prince, Haiti today, that's not back in 1987, but today is $1,819 per finca.org. Can you imagine making that much in a year? 58.5% of people in Haiti live below the poverty level, and Leo wasn't exactly flush with money. One day, Leo took us to his house. I have a picture here I'd like you to see of his house. He was so proud of it. That's him. That's his wife and two kids down in the corner that you can't see a couple of other kids that he has. It's one room, and it's a cinder block house divided by a few strings and wires with sheets hanging from them along with their clothes that they owned, dividing up the space. Not only would Leo shuttle us around and do anything for us to get us where we needed to be when we needed to be there, but he did it all for his family. He did it so that they could survive. 
so that they could stay in this little one-room house that put the Isidore family in a better and safer position than probably 90% of his fellow countrymen. This was on my first trip to Haiti. I took my second trip as a sophomore in college on another mission trip. And just before this trip, we learned that the Evangelical Lutheran Church of Haiti had received a land grant from the Ministry of Religion in Haiti of six acres in what then was the edge of a place called City Soleil. City Soleil was on the border of the edge of Port-au-Prince, Haiti. City Soleil was also the former garbage dump of Port-au-Prince. City Soleil was covered with homes now and squatters who were looking for a place to live and homestead while they scavenged for food in the garbage dump of Port-au-Prince. And our church body had just been given plans, or excuse me, some land, about six acres, to build a fenced-in area. And we had plans for this land to build a school, a medical office, a food station, a site manager residence, and a church building. But before we could do this, you know what you do, you have a groundbreaking ceremony. And we were there. So Leo drove us. You see a picture now on the screens of us at the groundbreaking ceremony in 1989. We had to drive all the way through City Soleil, but there's something you should know before I get into that part of the story. Following the devastating 7.0 magnitude earthquake that struck Haiti in 2010, UN troops were assigned to keep order in Haiti. They patrolled around Port-au-Prince and the country but there was one area that the UN troops refused to even patrol. City Soleil, City of the Sun. It was too dangerous, even for the UN troops who were armed, I might add. But back in 1989, huh, a bunch of sophomores in college and a couple even younger than that, well, Leo took us there for a groundbreaking ceremony. The ground wouldn't be the only thing that broke that afternoon, or that was broken that afternoon. After driving into the area and traveling to the site, we celebrated God's gifts of this land that he'd given to the church. We shoveled the dirt with the spray-painted golden shovel, and we praised the Lord for his provision for the people of Haiti. And then we all piled in Leo's tap-tap to leave. Part of the way out, the engine started to steam, and the vehicle slowed to a halt. Leo popped out of the driver's seat in the middle of a crowd in City Soleil filled with the residents there. He popped the hood because the tap tap had overheated. I got a picture of that too. Now, all of us white Midwestern kids that were with him, well, we began to draw the attention of all the residents of City Soleil and not only the residents that lived there, but also the black cloud of flies that was hovering over this sugar cane that was in a wheelbarrow sold by a vendor, they found us when we crawled out of the back of the tap tap. And amidst all the commotion of the flies and the people who saw all of us there and the Creole language with people calling, Blanc, Blanc, for whites, whites, we started to gain some attention with Leo under the tap tap there. He discovered the problem. From behind the seat, he pulled out a spent piece of plastic from a motor oil container and he took a knife out of his pocket and he started to carve a new gasket for the radiator because it had leaked out all the fuel which is why or excuse me the uh, radiator fluid which is why our tap tap overheated all the while we're milling around blissfully unaware of the fact that in addition to fixing the vehicle Leo was also simultaneously protecting us from this mob that had gathered around in the hopes of taking all the things that the Blanc Blanc tourists had. You see, we came from a country of plenty, and we must have had it with us there in this dangerous part of Haiti. You know, in retrospect, I realized how dangerous a situation we were in without even having realized it, because all I was that day in City Soleil was a stupid sheep. If you'll advance the slide one more, you'll see one of those people who was with us. That's looking the other way from where we were. 
were stuck in the middle of puddles and piles, and the people were gathered to both sides. I had no clue back then, but as we exited the entrance portion of where you go into City Soleil, we watched as a man was shot and killed. We were in grave danger that day, but the words that Leo spoke to the crowds that had gathered around us protected us. The improvised gasket that he cut for our needing repair vehicle saved us and got us out of there. And to the family that he knew he had back at home in the one-room block house, he too would return safe. Leo, for us and unbeknownst to us, had demonstrated what it meant in so many ways, to lay down his life for us, even though it didn't require his life of him. He knew what it meant to put himself in harm's way, to speak words of calm to the crowd on our behalf, to protect us and keep us safe, and to get us out of what could have been an even more dangerous situation, even if it caused him to put himself at risk for us. When I thought of a good shepherd... Of course I know my good shepherd, Jesus, and what he's done for me, but I had to think of it in terms that I could understand. Leo was, for me, a picture. A picture of the good shepherd. A picture of the good shepherd to a couple of stupid sheep that day there in Haiti, and he was to us, in retrospect, something of a Christ figure, who we now understand was willing to lay down himself lay down under a vehicle to put himself in harm's way for the rest of those people that he was driving there in City Soleil. Now I'd like to share with you another image. It's a picture, an artist's depiction of the true Good Shepherd. It depicts how he laid down his life for you, Jesus. This picture, the Good Shepherd, that's referred to in our Gospel today, this particular picture is a charcoal drawing by Kelly Schumacher. She's the daughter of one of my seminary professors. I have this picture in my office. I haven't yet framed it to put it up, but it depicts Christ, the Good Shepherd. And what you see here is from the viewpoint or the vantage point of God the Father, looking down on Jesus from above the cross. It's a virtual copy of a Salvador Dali printing from the mid 20th century. From high and holy heaven, God looks down from above and he sees Jesus there on the cross on Good Friday, his arms spread wide on the transepts of that cross. But if you take another look, you'll note that there's a different vantage point. You'll note that the top of the main structure of the cross looks something more like an altar. And that instead of viewing this picture from God's vantage point from above, that you would see it from your own. Jesus, the Good Shepherd, laying down his life willingly for you there as a sacrifice on that altar, just as that sacrificial altar utilized for Jesus was a cross. Hear what Kelly Shoemaker writes about this drawing that she made. In one interpretation, we see God's view of Jesus on the cross from above. But in a second view, we see the body of Christ, lying on a draped cloth atop an altar. There he becomes a fragrant offering that is pleasing to God. We are drawn to the altar of Holy Communion where we receive his body and blood. The wrath of God was satisfied in Jesus Christ, who was for us, the propitiation for our sins. The sight of the crucified one is meant to bring comfort to those who are troubled over their sins. Listen to that last phrase again that she writes about her own picture. The sight of the crucified one is meant to bring comfort to those who are troubled over their sins. In today's gospel lesson, Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life that I may take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down, and I have authority to lift it up again. This charge I have received from my Father. Brothers and sisters in Christ, 
because the very Son of God has laid down his life for you, his sheep, hear what Kelly Schumacher wrote a third time. The sight of the crucified one is meant to bring comfort to those who are troubled over their sins. Not the comfort of your bed, not the comfort of a green grassy field, but comfort in the realization that your sins are atoned for, paid up. That now there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ. Now you can hear his voice anew. Those familiar words. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. And you know the rest of the story. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil and my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That's the place of peace, in the house of the Lord, in the presence of the Lord forever. May it be so, for the sake of the good shepherd who laid down his life for you, even Jesus Christ our Lord. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Amen. At this time, we pause for a time of special music. This time in our service, I'd like to invite to the front here those people who are transferring membership or giving their membership to Redeemer Lutheran Church. There's a couple of you. I know who you are. Don't make me... Now, one of them we have to wait a little extra time for because he showed up this morning with a cast on his leg. And while they're coming up here, I'll, I'll uh, share with you that I told my wife last night. Guess what? We've never been received into membership yet here either, so this applies even to me. So uh, my family is joining us as well. Beloved in the Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ said to his apostles, whoever confesses me before men, I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. Lift up your hearts, therefore, to the God of all grace, and joyfully give answer to what I now ask you in the name of the Lord.
Do you this day in the presence of God and of this congregation acknowledge the gifts that God gave to each of you in your baptism? If so, then say, yes, I do. Do you renounce the devil in all his works and all his ways? If so, then say, yes, I renounce them. Yes, I renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, and in the Holy Spirit? If so, then say, yes, I do. Yes, I do. Do you hold all the prophetic and apostolic scriptures to be the inspired word of God and the doctrine of the evangelical Lutheran Church drawn from them and confessed in the small catechism to be faithful and true? If so, then say, I do. Do you intend to hear the word of God and to receive the Lord's Supper faithfully? If so, then say, I do, by the grace of God. Do you intend to live according to the word of God and in faith, word, and deed to remain true to God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, even to death? If so, then say, I do, by the grace of God. Do you intend to continue steadfast in this confession and church? and to suffer all, even death, rather than fall away from it? If so, then say, I do, by the grace of God. Do you desire to become a member of this congregation? If so, then say, I do. I do. Probably wouldn't be standing here if you didn't. <laughs> it sounds a little bit like a marriage, but that is indeed what it is. Will you support the work of our gracious Lord that he has given to this congregation with your prayers and the gifts that God has first given to you? If so, then say, I will, with the help of God. Upon this, your confession of faith, I acknowledge publicly that you are members of the Evangelical Lutheran Church and of this congregation. Receive the Lord's Supper and participate with us all in the blessings of salvation that our Lord has given to his church. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite the congregation to please rise for prayer with us. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for your great goodness in bringing these, your sons and daughters, to the knowledge of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and enabling them both with the heart to believe and with the mouth to confess his saving name. Grant that by your word and spirit they may continue steadfast in the one true faith in the fellowship of this congregation, as together we await the day when all who have fought the good fight of faith shall receive the crown of righteousness. We ask this through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. You may return to your seats. As you guys are returning to your seats, um, I'll ask you all to pay attention to these folks that you see. Um, and if you get the opportunity after church, I know we're supposed to be following lots of different uh, directions with uh, with respect to the COVID business, but please introduce yourself to them if you don't know who they are and welcome them. It's a pleasure to have all of you as a part of our congregation. We continue with the prayers of the church. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy that the good shepherd of Israel who has sought out his sheep and gathered us with them into one flock would keep us always in his fold and guard us from every wolf and snare, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the church and flock of God, that as new life was breathed into the world through the resurrection of Christ, so now by his Holy Spirit new life would be breathed into her also. And that freed by his gospel we would always confess the name of Jesus Christ, the only name given among men by which we must be saved. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For an increase in the love of Christian brothers, one to another, especially within our own homes, that we may daily show our confidence in God by deed and truth, laying down our lives as Christ first did for us, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the gift of good government, that as the Paschal Lamb has wrought peace between man and God, so he would grant peace and good days also to our citizens and between the nations of the world, and that we and all our neighbors may lead quiet lives in godly contentment, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. In thanksgiving for those who have given of themselves to serve the public for its greater good, for those who serve in the military, both at home and abroad, and those who serve as first responders here at home for us, 
that the Lord would continue to bless them with his protective arms and that we would recognize his authority as exercised through them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord God, out of your fatherly goodness, you have remembered us poor, miserable sinners, and you've given your beloved Son to be our shepherd, not only to nourish us by his word, but also to defend us from sin, death, and the devil. Grant us your Holy Spirit, that even as this shepherd knows us and helps us in every affliction, we would also know him and trust him, seeking help and comfort in him and him alone, heartily obeying his voice and obtaining through it eternal salvation. We pray this through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Please be seated as we sing our closing hymn number 912. A couple of uh, quick announcements for you before we dismiss today. First of all, welcome. Welcome to all of you, but a special welcome to our new members. Um, and I would encourage you to try and greet them if you get the chance. Um, I know I didn't say this before, but Jeff and Linda Hensley down here in front, Amy and Tate McReynolds, I know that that's, uh, you probably know them, and Carolyn Zemer. Carolyn rejoins us, actually, from coming back from Little Rock, right? Right. So uh, welcome to all of you. It's a pleasure to welcome you into membership or back into membership, as the case may be. Um, a quick announcement or two about next week. Um, before services next week, so before the late service, if this is when you normally attend, we will be having a, uh, a congregational meeting. So we'll wrap services at the 8.30 service next Sunday and about 10 minutes of break in there, and then we'll uh, meet. We're going to meet right here in the sanctuary next week. So I want to extend an invitation for all of you um, to come join us for that congregational meeting um, this coming week. 
We'll be doing um, just a couple of items of business, but not the least of which will include election of new officers for the upcoming terms. So I uh, would encourage you to please be with us as we uh, vote for those new officers here in the church. Um, if you're a regular attender of our Bible study, we'll be omitting Bible study next week for the congregational meeting between services. Um, that brings me to my next announcement is the following week after that, if you're a regular Bible study attender. Um, we will not be having Bible study that week because my family and I will be out of town back in Nebraska for my son's graduation from college. So I have a uh, pulpit supply um, already arranged for that day, and he will not be leading a Bible study that day, Pastor Two. So, um, but church will still carry on, and the voice of the Good Shepherd will still be proclaimed just from a different fella up in the front up here. So I encourage you to still be here for that too. Um, I don't know that I have any other announcements that you can't read on your own in the bulletin, so I will commend those readings of those announcements to each of you. If you take those with you, you're welcome to do that. Have a blessed day and week in the name of the Lord. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Amen.